name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome to our celebration as we celebrate the Tuesday within the octave of Easter. As we come to today's Mass, the readings are full of encouragement and help. They tell you about God's mercy and the various Easter stories that give us hope. And as we begin, we place our trust in Almighty God, knowing that He helps us in all our difficulties, and we pray they would help us rise from this coronavirus that has us all so isolated. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You promised pardon and peace to the sinner of Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of God our Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Endowed your people with heavenly gifts, so that possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and they asked Peter and the other apostles, 
What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us who have put our hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she bent over the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feast, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. And when she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, Tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And he said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I go to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. John in his Gospel today, and Luke in his Gospel yesterday, gives us 
stories of how the disciples came to recognize the risen Christ. John told us he went to the tomb, he saw and he believed. The two disciples on the way to Amos last night met Jesus on the road. He talked to them about how Christ would have to suffer, die and rise again according to the scriptures. And they didn't recognize Christ. But at the end of the evening, being a stranger, they invited him in. They invited him in. And as he partook of their evening meal, they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. They recognized him in the Eucharist. And today we have the third story, Mary, who went to the tomb, found it empty, went and told James, told John and Peter, and came back to the tomb. It was empty. She was crying, grieving the loss of someone she really loved, heartbroken. And it's, when you're heartbroken, it's very hard to understand the loss, the pain. And there Mary was at the empty tomb. And then she looked in and said, and saw two beautiful angels. And it said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And they said, they've taken my Lord and I don't know where they put him. And then she turned around and saw Jesus not recognizing him first because he was in this glorified state. And she thought he was the gardener. Again, she said, where have you put him that I may take him? She thought he was still, she thought the body was stolen still. And then Jesus said to her, Mary. And then she recognized Jesus. And she said, teacher, Rabboni teacher. And then like any human being, when they've realized someone they've lost then went to hug him. He said, don't touch me. I've not yet ascended to my father, but go tell my brothers that I've risen and go to Galilee. And then Mary left Jesus and announced that she'd seen the risen Lord and told him all he had told her. And that's the main thing the disciples tell us. You all experienced the risen Lord in different ways in these Caesar studies, but it was very personal. And Mary being really the one who stayed with Jesus on the cross, went to the tomb, she met him face to face, and he told her that he had risen, and she experienced it. Now we too are going through different situations. We take hope that we trust in Jesus, trust in the risen Lord. He will guide us and help us no matter what's taking place and no matter what's happening to us. If we trust in him, he'll be with us. And as you join me in every Eucharist this week, you too can find him present in the Eucharist. You too can recognize him in the breaking of the bread when you say your spiritual communion with me. With confidence that God is always with us, let us offer him our prayers today. We pray for all members of the church. May the risen Lord inspire our witness to the gospel each day. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our president, for our governors, and for all local leaders. May God guide them in working together to address the needs of the country in this most vulnerable time, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for those who are discouraged by illness. May God bring them healing of mind, body, and soul, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all our young people who are waiting to receive the sacraments. 
at this time. We pray for our catechumens, our confirmandi, and for our first communicants. We pray that soon they will be able to receive these sacraments and experience the risen Christ in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all the faithful departed. We pray especially for Mike Vohr and for Sylvia Nabogoski. May they be welcomed in the heavenly kingdom by the Queen of Saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And now at home, let us pray for each other. Pray for the prayers that lie deep in our hearts. And pray that this isolation will disappear, that we can come together and worship together in community. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Father, today we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now pray with me that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy spirit. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care we never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer firstly for the Holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, 
and all those who hold in the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. Today I ask you to pray for all the parishioners of St. Anne who are isolated, that they will soon come together. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in the hope of health and well-being, paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. And celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, and John, and all your saints, we ask that through the merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you, and also for those you are pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them the forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal and redemption, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said a blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of fate. Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, the glorious ascension of heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your people, offer to your glorious majesty for the many gifts you have given to us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high. 
in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation in the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially Sylvia and Mike, who've gone before us in the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, we pray, O Lord, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of life, refreshment, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graces you grant some share of fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Steve, Matthias, Barnabas, Agatha, Lucy, Cecilia, and Anne, and all your saints. Amid as we beseech you with our company, not weigh in our merits, but grant us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these things good, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. For through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we offer each other a gesture of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, as you bestow upon your family the perfect grace of baptism, and so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we pray to Michael the Archangel for protection. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about, seeking the root of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and courageously live the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.